Hey, this is Anthony from Brazil. You can watch Decide and Ride. Welcome to our detailed breakdown of the new Climb Badlands Pro jacket and pants available at Brazil.com. This is the third iteration of the Climb Badlands Pro, slated to hit for the spring of 2018. Pay no attention to high -vis Brian's mustache to my left. Just pay attention to the new jacket and pant combo, Apex Predator for four season adventure riding from Climb. This is your jacket, this is your pants. It is Gore Pro Shell, meeting waterproof, breathable, guaranteed for life with tons of function, tons of protection, and tons of ventilation, allowing you to stretch it into true four season. Now, as with all Climb shells, they are modular in design, meaning you buy your hardcore bomb-proof shell, and then you bring your own base or mid-layer. So if you want to stretch it into the depths of winter, you're adding base and mid-layers to beef up your comfort level and warmth. But ultimately, as you get into summer weight riding season, you're going to open up all the vents and flow a ton of air. Now, before I tell you the three big things that have changed on this third iteration of Badlands Pro, quickly, Four jacket colors, there's a high vis, there's a black, this is your black and tan version. There's also a gray and three colors in the pant. Now, diving into the key changes, the things that you need to know about. From a comfort perspective, they've changed the liners of this jacket. It's now a little bit more comfortable. They've changed the kidney belt we're going to talk about. They've changed the collar, which is my favorite comfort feature they've added here. It's now shorter. They've gotten a lip. They've eliminated all metallic objects, and they've given you fleece all the way around. Again, creature comforts making it more comfortable. They've also gone to a new fabric called FPL 400, which allows the main construction to be even less crunchier. They've shaved about a pound just off the jacket itself, and you can see that versus the previous SP. 600. Again, I'm throwing out numeric things here at you, but what you need to know is it's lighter weight, more, a uh, little bit more flexible, less crunchy. From a protection standpoint, we're going to walk through all of it. Ad nauseum, they've beefed up your shoulders now with an engineered style of super fabric, and the biggest change, still carrying the CE2 level rating, that they've made from an armor and protection standpoint is what they've done is they've now going to, going to D3O Aero Pro Armor, which is absolutely massive. Now, this is not specific just to climb. You're going to see this in other high-end adventure-oriented pieces that take D3O. But if we look at it, still temperature stable through the full range. It now has even massive coverage on the medial and lateral sides. This is a knee, by the way. It's more ventilated. Again, remember, D3O Armor, it is soft when you're wearing it. You introduce that shock, it transfers the energy and becomes rigid, dispersing and lengthening the impact, minimizing the shock transfer to your body. Remember, this comes stock with elbows, shoulders, and back in the jacket itself. And now the pants are going to have knees, which they've always had, but they also have hips. And they now have a tailbone protector done in D3O. And again, this is the new Aero Pro. You can watch our detail breakdown video just on this armor, which you're going to see in a lot of other places. It is massive. It's as big as your head. Goodbye, kind sir. The other thing I would take into consideration as you think about this, right? They've made it a little bit more lightweight, but they've also done some tweaks to the vents. They've added two more vents in the back, which now take it up to 12 vents just for the jacket. What they've done is they've moved the chest vents. You've now moved the armpit vent in towards the front. You've moved the chest vent down to the torso. You still have two on each arm. Ultimately, the venting system on this jacket is meant to directly vent to the body Tape seams throughout. It does not nullify the value of the Gore-Tex waterproof, windproof breathability. But with these vents open in the summer riding seasons, you're getting tremendous airflow and exhaust while maintaining your level of protection, which again, I would classify this in technical terms as a bomb proof as you're looking at, is at an apex predator for on-road, off-road with full-on moto or MX style boots to taking it to more of that adventure touring on-road, off-road appeal. Really this jacket and pant kind of sets that new bar for tech when you think about the multi-season rider through the adventure lens. Now, take a deep breath. That was a lot. I'm going to walk through everything we've just told you that changed the big highlights function, protection, breathability, comfort. We're going to walk through them in more depth as we move, but let's talk about fitment. I have, his, I have high vis mustache Brian to my left, no beard. It's like write it down for all of time. Six foot, 195, 42 inch chest. Athletic build, he's wearing a size large. You'll notice the cut of this jacket needs to leave you room for a mid or a base layer. It's not meant to be super felt like some of the more on-road options from Climb. He is right in the middle of that size curve 
for a large. And I'll tell you, he's wearing a pair of large Climb Badlands Pro pants as well. He's going to be a 35 inch jeans waist. He's about a 33 inch belt waist for jeans, or I'm sorry, belly button was 35, jeans waist is 33, 32 inch inseam with some adjustability in the knee. He's wearing a size large regular as well. So keep that in mind. Lots of areas to cinch, although they did get rid of some of the cinching at the bicep here, and they've cleaned up the lines of this jacket, but ultimately, American cut, even if you're an athletic build, you're gonna be fine in the sweet spot of the size cart. Use the size cart, call us if you have any questions, and ultimately we'll ship for free over 39 bucks. I'd also love it if you click our logo, subscribe to RevZilla on our YouTube channel, leave us your comments, your questions, your feedback on a new Badlands Pro, which you can see too, if you think about the old version, which we should show you a quick picture of, even the lines on this jacket, one of the things that jumped out to me immediately is if we look at all of the reflectives that they've worked in, you have it down here on the sleeve as well, it's now more thoughtful, it's asymmetrical, it's more, it's more thoughtfully placed within the jacket and the aesthetic theme. I actually think this brings a new level of kind of badass style to it as well. But if you're looking at this jacket at this level at the thousand dollar price point, you're not looking to maximize the style, you're looking to maximize the function and stay protected for year long rides. So if we look at the exterior, remember, FPL 400 is a lighter weight material. It's still gonna be Gore-Tex. This is Gore fully laminated. That's how it's considered Gore Pro. Tape seams, waterproof, breathable, guaranteed for life, meaning mother nature can do whatever she wants to you and you're gonna stay breathable, you're gonna stay comfortable. It's gonna block wind, block all rain, precipitation. But as you start to sweat, that sweat will be evaporated. It's now Climatech lined around the armor areas for more comfort and you have a antimicrobial inner liner. It wicks sweat away and allows it to evaporate out through the jacket itself. In your impact areas, they've gone away from armor core and that's Gore Armacore, which is a Cordura and Aramid infused fiber. And now they're using Carbonite from Climb, which is still ripstop. It still has Aramidic properties, but ultimately it's a little bit lighter weight. It's Climb's own recipe. And ultimately I don't really mind it, because what they've done is they've gotten rid of it in some of the areas where it would have made this jacket in the past a little bit more beefy, a little bit too crunchy. So they're using it strategically through the impact areas where they're not using the super fabric. Again, giving you that extra layer of ripstop. And I will say that you see it along the pockets. Pockets down the front, pockets up here. Notice your entry and exit for these pockets that have nice big pulls is right up here. You do have pockets down here that are hand warmer that do open on a diagonal. But I will call this out, and this is a little bit of a gripe, the pockets are no longer seam sealed, so the pockets are no longer waterproof. And that was one of the things. I didn't mind that they went away from the Armacore to the Carbonite, but I do mind that they didn't give you exterior waterproof pockets. There are, there are pockets on the inside of this jacket, but if you're looking at this for extended riding, you're thinking about what you might need to carry in a cargo pocket. Now you have to stick it in a Ziploc or think about it getting wet. And again, climb if you're listening, that was just one area. And I understand as you engineer these, you have to make trade-offs, but that was one area where we thought things could be improved. Now, that would be the front. Let's work our way up to the collar here and talk about that briefly. One of the cool parts about this jacket, in the previous version, we did not like the snaps were integrated with the Velcro. Those metallic areas gave pressure points and they made it harder to line up. Now with the new Climb Badlands Pro, you're getting all soft parts. So this is going to be a collar stay that opens up. Warmer times of the year, you have the ability to pin it open. There's snow snaps. And notice the tri-fleece lining around the part of your neck that will feel it directly and then up around the cuff. So again, that's been increased and expanded all the way around. They've also shortened and stiffened the collar. So again, just making it a little bit more technical and ergonomic, you're gonna get better fit. And when you get better fit, you don't think about it, you stay focused, you enjoy your ride longer. Now, as we work our way down the torso, you're gonna see a few things going on here. The first are some of these vents. You can see they've moved the vents over this way. These vents have now been moved down. These are AquaGuard zippers. They're not AquaSeal zippers, meaning they're heavy duty and water resistant, but they still pass the Gore Pro standard. Again, can you go jump in the pool with these? You can't, but for an extended rain all day long, 60 plus miles an hour, they're not gonna leak on you. And that's why you're getting that Gore Pro, you're investing at that high level. Notice the zipper garages here. As we work our way to the sleeve though, there's a little bit of a difference. There's a new technology that's crept this way and this is very cool. Notice that these are still AquaGuard zips, but they terminate differently. And how they terminate, the biggest problem over time that we've seen with these zippers, especially the ones that have been exposed on the lateral sides on the outside of the bike or the outside of your frame as you're riding, is they tend to have weak points at the top where we see these garages come into play and especially on the arm zips. So what Climb has done is they've teamed up with the folks that make the AquaSeal zips, and they've taken this last tooth, 
which is really the termination point where you normally see a zipper garage, and they've given you the last tooth off an aqua, gar or an aqua Seal zipper. The Aqua Seal zippers are the most expensive zippers in the world. Ask these manufacturers about how expensive they are because they lose their mind. But ultimately, you get that last tooth, which really is the equivalent of a hazmat suit, which ultimately has to be fully waterproof, like if you jumped into the pool. So ultimately, you're getting that technology in a multitude of places now, eliminating the weak point for any water seepage, again, without a zipper garage or in a highly exposed area, which is a nice touch. Now, I'm looking at the front here. We haven't unzipped it, and that's totally fine. Let's work our way through the sleeve. If we look at the sleeve, the previous version had a cinch at the bicep. They've just cleaned up the lines a little bit more. They've done away for the cinch. They've simplified it. Notice down here on the forearm, you still have a cinch because typically forearm sizes, they tend to vary a little bit more with riders and the way that they're, cons they're constructing these depending on the body size. Now, if I open this up, I will show you this. This is a late production sample that we've had the ability to ride in and play with. But ultimately, to be fully CE rated as this garment is, it's going to have a tether inside to make sure that if you happen to get off and the zipper pops open, that it stays in place. So ultimately, what you're going to see when I open these is that you see the direct venting point, you see the mesh that backs it, you see this, the flap behind it to, again, channel anything that might get through away and down. But what happens is you get the direct venting, but you need those stays that keep things in place. And you'll see them on the final production version. If we look at the cuff, Medial side cuff, plenty of adjustability, no monkey paw hiding in there. Notice you can see the inner liner, which has that nice texture to it that's gonna be wicking going all the way down. Very simple, whether you're going over the cuff or under the cuff, depending, you just wanna be able to pull that down without, without any hard parts or pressure points. And ultimately, Climb has simplified their cuffs across the line. We like where they've landed with them. They have been a refinement over time as we've been working with Climb over the years. So the other thing to consider as we work our way through the exterior is this pocket right here. And we used to call it the ouch pocket where it's the great spot that calls attention to any medical info or personal info you're carrying if you happen to be out cold and somebody needs to help you out. But when we open this up, standard pocket, but what you're going to find when you reach in there is there's an additional flap with an additional stash. So while on the inside of this jacket they've moved the secret stash pocket, they've also given you a secondary secret stash pocket on the arm again to try to carry anything that might be sensitive that you really don't want discovered if you happen to get a shakedown on a border crossing or with some unsavories that you might just run into. So keep that in mind, again, an iteration and thinking through the functionality of what you actually need when you're riding. Now, Hive is Brian. Look at the style on this guy. Turn him face away, let's walk through the sleeve. If we look at the sleeve, we touched briefly on it, but this is now engineered super fabric. So what Climb has done is they're working with super fabric, which is a shoulder material. Remember, these are tiny laser welded ceramic plates that ultimately allow you to slide 14 times further than if it was just regular leather. Again, molecular technology. They're also breathable, but what they've found the ability to do now is engineer the density, engineer the placement, go over the seam. The previous version had super fabric there. It was just super fabric on top. Now what they've done is they've, do they've dipped down over top of your arm, giving you a bit of an asymmetrical feel. I actually really dig the fact they put the Climb logo in the super fabric and didn't give you some big yellow thing screaming in your face. But ultimately, the fact that they can engineer it now gives you greater coverage allows them to kind of thrust vector where they put it. So now you're ultimately getting it where you need it, getting it where you don't. And I will tell you too, as you work your way down, the elbow moving your way down to the forearm is absolutely massive, but it's where you need it, not where you don't. And again, remember, that's full coverage, impact and slide resistance if you happen to have the gnarliest of gnarly off. They've moved the spot tracker pocket. Notice it used to be on the front. Now it's out on the sleeve, out of harm's way. And the other thing we talked about earlier is, I love the fact that you have asymmetrical reflectivity, but this zipper is new. This rear arm exhaust zipper, it's gonna funnel air from the, from the front and allow two more points of exhaust. That is brand new. So if he's in the riding position, just think touring riding position, you now have air coming in the sleeve from the front and from the bicep, exiting out behind the tricep. Again, just creating that great airflow so it's not gonna balloon on you. For the back, we still have our main vertical zips across the back there. Again, more carbonite which is going to be your ripstop material, replacing the armor core. And then Hivis Brian, turn backwards for me real quick. You can see the cinches down around the waist. You can see down here too, this is just gonna be a big pocket rabbit pouch there. But what they've done, the back on the previous version of this used to be heavy duty gore armor core. It was just massive. It was crunchy, it was heavy. What they've done is they've gone to this FPL 400. Now you still have your CE level two back protector here done in D3O. They found that the back protector, the shock absorbing area, coupled with a gore rated fabric was good enough. They didn't have to go down the super rabbit hole of giving you all of that extra crunch and weight factor. You still have your impact areas which are more prone on the sides, but your back gets the back protector and that's good enough. Up here towards the collar, notice again, 
It's going to be a shaped 3D reflector, a reflective panel done in that matte gray. Again, giving you a illustration of the humanoid form. What they found through testing is that when you can illustrate the limbs as well as the torso, a human being will actually react faster, realizing it's not a street sign or an automobile, that it's actually a human on the bike. So they never want to lose that humanoid form factor. And again, just nice, clean, clean design. Notice big drop seat. If you're in an upright riding position, you're going to be sitting on this jacket. And before you move on, let's work our way down the backs of the pants. Notice rear exhaust on the pant, single point of adjustment on the back side of the knee, very similar to the previous version by way of the storm cuff going down on the lateral side for entry and exit. And then you do have snaps down towards the bottom. And remember, knee armor is adjustable. Come back around to the front for me there, Briz. Let's open this bad boy up. Now, Notice the storm flap as he opens. It's a weak point for water. Notice this rain gutter that goes all the way down. Go ahead. That's your beefy, massive Vislon zipper. Also notice down towards the bottom here, it's a two-way zip. So if you're sitting on your bike and everything starts to push up, you can break it at the bottom and give yourself a little bit of additional room to move. As we open this up, you're going to see 3D armor, which is Climbs armor on the interior. It's no longer dowel deflection. That's been sold. That technology has been sold to Climb. So Climb putting their own 3D, almost looks like a bird's nest the way that this is done. It's a soft, flexible armor that breathes, giving you coverage from your controls and from your handlebars. If you happen to have a forward impact, notice it is fully removable. As you open up the interior, there's your mesh lining, which is antimicrobial and is going to be wicking, very lightweight. And if we work our way in here, where's my kidney belt? Oh, I lost it. Let's go on this side here. There it is. It's still sticking out. Notice we now have a dual adjustability for the kidney belt. So in years past, it was single adjustability and it was bigger. They've streamlined it. They've given you the ability to take the load, especially if you load up all the pockets on this, off of your upper back, put it down, sit that lower, lower that center of gravity, use that kidney belt to give you the support while you're riding in longer distances. And they've now made it two position, two position adjustable versus single adjustable. If we open it up all the way. One of the things you can't see is they've changed the hydration system. It now comes through this pocket. It comes up over the shoulder. It's easier to ex or it's easier to access. And the other thing that they did is you still have a number of secret pockets pockets in here. You have a secret pocket on the front, you have some pockets on the other side, but there is a super secret pocket that lives behind the back protector because after two generations of the jacket with the third generation, for those that were riding through the dangerous parts of the world, that ultimately the federales that might have been more loca localized understood to look for the secret pockets. Climb has moved it, hopefully tricking the bogeys and allowing you to put your passport and potentially um, your extra stash of cash somewhere a little bit more safe. Notice down here towards the bottom too, you do have these pulls to cinch everything up because ultimately you want everything cinched down when you're thinking about seeing the worst of what, the worst of what mother nature has to offer. If we look at the pants, again, self cinching up here along the waist, I'm not going to undo it, but it's, a, it's a, a slide and a snap. Ultimately, you're moving down additional pockets with big, big zipped vents for airflow through the pan itself. And the biggest takeaway for me is that massive knee is still fully adjustable. They also couple that with leather on the inside of the knees for grip and durability, especially if it happens to be in more wet weather riding. Go ahead, zip, zip that bad boy back up. Hive is Brian. So ultimately, if I have to summarize what is around a thousand dollar investment just for the jacket and then additional big bucks for the pants, you're looking at an apex predator within the four season adventure realm. Take this jacket and pant combo with a mixture of base and mid layers that you might stow to start out with, and you could take it absolutely around the world. The things that stand out to me are the things that make the most difference. They're going to be protection and comfort in my eyes. It got lighter, less fatigue. The collar has been re-engineered. It's less, it will be more friendly and it won't annoy you over time because ultimately they've gotten rid of all those pressure points. So ultimately those things come into play. Additional vents allowing you to stay cooler when it's really hot and you're really working hard standing on the pegs. That's that comfort factor. When you get into the protection, I love the fact they've given you more super fabric and I love the fact we're now using AeroPro armor from D3O, which is just absolutely massive, temp stable at both ends, flows a ton of air and is asymmetrical and super protective. They're the things that are going to make the biggest difference, whether it's every mile you put on the bike or in the situations where you need the jacket to perform fully do its job when you go down. Obviously, you're getting the pro level of Gore Pro, which is laminated Gore Protects behind all of the outer shells of this material, waterproof, breathable, guaranteed for life, stick it to mother nature. And at the end of the day, you've got multiple color options to take this jacket and pant combo. 
and put it through whatever paces you want to put it through. Consider it a ringing endorsement from us. We like the iteration. We like where Climb has done, and they really haven't raised the price, considering this is the third version, and ultimately the technology is dramatically different than when they were originally started years ago. Now, the next step in your journey is to click the info button on your desktop and mobile device. Visit the product detail page at RevZilla.com. Read other rider reviews. You shouldn't just take my word for it. As always, we'll ship for free over 30 bucks, and if you want to talk to a hardcore adventure gear geek, see us at RevZilla.com or 877-792-9455. Thanks for watching our detailed breakdown. Remember, subscribe to us at RevZilla on our YouTube channel. Stay up to date with our opinion of the latest and greatest in the Moto Universe. I'm Anthony. We'll see you next time.